Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to knit this super quick and easy chunky weight scarf. It makes for the perfect mindless project for a more experienced knitter, but it has a really simple two row repeat so that the beginners amongst you can feel confident in tackling this project as well. This scarf measures about 18 centimetres wide and two metres long, so it's perfect to wrap you up on those snuggly cold mornings that are approaching fast in my area of the world. To make this scarf, you are going to need three balls of Shapier's Namaste yarn. You can use different yarn if you want, but just be aware that your size of your scarf may vary if the um, weight of the yarn is slightly different to this namaste so you're going to need three balls of this yarn you're also going to need some eight millimeter knitting needles because this is a scarf you can use straight needles if you want i just prefer to use circular needles you're going to need a tapestry needle with a nice large eye and you're going to want some embroidery scissors as well so without further ado grab your needles grab some yarn and let's get knitting Using the long tail cast on method, you want to cast on 25 stitches. Once you've cast on 25 stitches, we're ready to jump straight into our pattern repeat. I like this side of the cast on edge to be the right side of my work. So we are going to turn our work and the first row of our two row repeat that we are going to work will be a wrong side row. So to start, you want to knit 10 stitches. The next little section of um, stitches is how we work that nice run of textured stitches up the middle of the scarf. The way we work those is not by purling, but we are going to slip our stitches purl wise with the yarn in front so that means you want to pop your working yarn to the front of your work if you're a continental knitter like me you can just pick the yarn up like that then you want to put your needle into the next stitch from right to left so as if to purl pull the stitch across over onto your right hand needle and then drop that working yarn back round in front of the stitch then we are going to knit the next stitch and we're repeating those two stitches twice more. So we are going to slip the next one with our yarn in front, knit the next one, slip the next one with our yarn in front and knit the next one. You should then have nine stitches left on your left hand needle and you want to knit those nine stitches so then just knit to the end of the row and you want to turn your work so row two and every even row after that is our right side row and for our right side rows you just want to knit every single stitch you can already see that three stripe texture appearing even after two rows. So I'll just show you the wrong side row again. You can always tell if you're on a wrong side row because your cast on tail will be at the beginning of the needles with you. So row one of our two row repeat on the wrong side is knit 10. Once you've knit 10, you want to slip a stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. So you put your needle behind the working yarn, slip it in purlwise into the next stitch, lift the stitch off your needles and then drop that yarn over the stitch so it catches. Then knit the next one. And you want to repeat those two stitches twice more. So we're going to slip one purlwise, with the yarn in front, knit one, slip one purlwise with the yarn in front, knit one. 
and then you want to knit the nine stitches that are left on your left hand needle. Turn your work and row two is nice and easy. We're knitting all those stitches. So every right side row, we are just knitting every single stitch. And you keep repeating those same two rows all the way up the scarf, it's that easy. So the wrong side row is knit 10, and then you work those three groups of slip one purl wise with the yarn in front, knit one so three times, and then you knit the last nine stitches. I'm going to go away and add a little bit more, and then what I am want to do for this project in particular is show you how you introduce a new ball of yarn, because um, when you're working in all the same colour, there is a way that I change yarn that just helps my colour changes be less loose at the end, particularly with roving yarn like this. It has a habit of having loose colour changes. So I will come back and show you how I introduce a new ball of yarn that gives um, the neatest changeover for me in particular. So normally when I change colours, I would always change colour at the beginning of a row because if you don't, you don't get a nice neat stripe. But for this project, because I wasn't changing colour, I was just adding the next ball of yarn. I found I got a neater join if I just tweaked my um, new yarn start slightly. So I want you to imagine that we have come to the end of a ball of wool. We've got the right side of our work facing us. So we're just about to start a right side row where we knit all our stitches. And what you want to do is you want to knit the first two stitches with the old yarn. Then you want to pick up your new ball of yarn, leave an appropriate size tail for sewing in those ends later. Pick it up as if it was your working yarn and then just start knitting. Just carry on knitting them with the new colour. And you have your tails neatly on the back like this here and we can sort those out at the end of our project and i'll show you how to sew them in nice and neatly so you then just carry on working as normal knit to the end of the row and you can see we've changed color really nicely when you come back along the opposite row you might find that these stitches work slightly loose so what you can do just before you work those two stitches is just to re-tug those tails tight and what you can do before you sort your ends is just tie a loose knot so that holds those ends in place um, and then i will show you at the end how we tidy everything up so then you will just carry on knitting until you reach the end of this second ball and attach the next ball in exactly the same way. And then you want to carry on knitting until you've nearly worked to the end of your third ball of yarn. And you want to end with a right side row facing you. And then I will show you how to cast off and to sew in all our ends. So go away, knit the rest of your project and then come back to me when you're nearing the end of your third ball and I will show you how we finish that off. I want you to use your imagination a little bit and imagine that this is a fully fledged scarf. We've got two meters of knitting on our needles and we have approached the end of our third ball of yarn and we are ready to cast off. You want to cast off with the right side of your work facing you just so that you get symmetry top and bottom with so that the edges look as similar as possible and to cast off we're just going to work a simple knitted cast off so to start your cast off you knit the first two stitches as normal then you want to get to the first stitch you knitted and lift it over the second stitch and off the needle so that you have one stitch left on the needle. The aim of the game with a knitted cast off is you never have more than two stitches on this right hand needle at any one time. So then we're going to work all the way along, knitting one and lifting one all the way to the end of the row until you only have one stitch left. When you're left with just this final loop on your needles, you want to pull the loop so it's nice and big and break your yarn. You can get rid of your knitting needles, we don't need those anymore. And then with this loop to secure it, I pull my tail through that loop and pull and tighten it. And then what you will have is you will have a scarf Finish top and bottom and you will have several sets of ends where you've changed yarn balls and you will have these two ends where you have started and finished your work. 
I'm going to show you how to sew in one end, but the theory is the same for how you sew in all your ends. With the exception of these two tails, because you don't need to do the knotting that I do first. So if you can see here, you can barely see where the colour change was on the front of the yarn. And just to secure things nicely, I tighten this knot that I made when the work was on my needles and I do another knot for good measure. And I pull that knot nice and tight so that it makes it nice and small so that it's not visible and it's not visible from the front of the work either. Then I will weave one tail below the change and one tail above the change so that I'm not getting too much bulk all in one place. And the way I do all my ends is as follows. So you want to thread your tapestry needle. Once you've threaded your tapestry needle, you want to work it down probably two rows below where the change was. And you want it to come out where you've got one of these little bumps here. Pull it through. Pull it down nice and tight into your work but not so tight that it's puckering things, so just nice and firm. And then what we want to do is we're going to follow the yarn in like a zigzag pattern. So we are going to go down round this bump, up and diagonally backwards to where this next bump is, following where the yarn has gone. And you want to pull through and pull nice and tight. Again, follow this bump down into that loop and we're going to go back into the space we've just come from before. Pull through and pull nice and tight. Once more, follow the bump around, up and across to where we've just gone into before. Pull up and pull tight. And you want to do that for about six or seven stitches along just so you have a nice amount of weaving going on and then when you are done imagine we're done here i just thread the yarn up a couple of garter bumps pull it nice and tight and then cut my end and that by threading it up a few garter bumps, it means that when your work wiggles and this yarn tail invariably moves slightly, it doesn't undo and it just works slightly down this work here. And then that is your finished scarf. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, I would love it if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if you do make one of these scarves, please tag me on social media because I love to see all of your work. That's it from me for now. And I'll see you again for another tutorial soon. Bye.